Previously on My Kitchen Rules. They look hungry. Teens, yeah. wild construction workers. Korean barbecue meat. Thank you. Hot sauce? Can't wait to get into that. But Josh and Danielle's barbie dish. Straight on there. It's a disappointing dish. Needed a renovation. You need to come to sudden death and fight. Going home is not even an option for us. Then, in Brisbane. Where are these going? I don't know. I can't even function. Emotions rocked the truck to its core. I've just let down the whole team. And the white group were left shattered. You will battle each other in kitchen headquarters. I am glad we're on the sideline. It's going to be one hell of a show. Tonight. Ooh la la. It's a romance challenge. Can you do a romantic <laughs> dinner for two dudes by two dudes? <laughs> but only one team member will be hands on. That is not going to be easy. Bye bye. It's the single life for teams. I feel helpless. I tell you what, mate, this is a mad scramble. Helena, listen to me. I just want to get off that chair and help her, and I can't. Helena. And for some on the jury. Whoever was cooking me this on a date, they would have won me over. <laughs> there's no love lost. <laughs> really, really bad dish. This is the best. Again, we've lost every truck challenge so far in this competition, and we've got to nail this now. Being in kitchen headquarters today means that we're honestly one step closer to sudden death. We start today with four teams. Four teams who, as a group, lost the food truck challenge. Ultimately, it was our fault that we didn't do well in the last track challenge. Experiencing such a low, it does shatter your confidence a little bit. But we need to seriously get into the right headspace or we're going to go home. But that's all in the past. You need to focus on the now. What you do next will determine your future in this competition. How scary. By the end of today, one team will be left to face Josh and Danielle in the sudden death cook-off. Josh and Danielle are really determined. They seem to have a lot of tricks up their sleeve, so we definitely don't want to face off against them. Teams, we always ask you to cook with love. Well, today, you need to do this and so much more. Cooking can be sexy. <laughs> Cooking is the universal language of love. Cooking can be sexy. I was attracted to my husband because he could cook. He doesn't cook so much now because he'd rather just sit back and let me do it. So we want you to create your ultimate romantic meal. The dish that makes you totally irresistible. Ooh la la. I think romance for us these days is a babysitter and then going out for dinner. Teams, the jury will try each romantic meal in a blind tasting. Then they will choose the dish that they love and save that team from the showdown. Manu and I will also save one team. Teams, you have just 45 minutes. The storeroom is open. Take to your stations and get ready to cook. Love is in the air. Yeah. Can you do a romantic <laughs> dinner for two dudes by two dudes? <laughs> How about we try some duck today? I'd love to I do love that. I love duck. That yeah. beautiful ocean trout. That's beautiful. Should we get that? Yeah, that. Sexy to me is seafood straight off the yeah, bat. Yeah, definitely seafood. We need oysters. With a nice, beautiful, aromatic miso broth and yeah, some yum. soba noodles. That sounds good, doesn't it? Yep. So I think I'm thinking, you know, a nice piece of steak. Yeah. Boys love meat, so I think steak is a great idea. God, that, that can get quite heavy. All right, I reckon a nice, nice creamy pasta, mate, with a bit of seafood. That's always going to be good. All right, let's go. So we've got all these items. Oh. James, listen for a second. When you're cooking for that special someone, do you cook in pairs or solo? <laughs> That's right. You cook on your own. That's how you're going to do it here today. Oh, my. Is this a joke? It's not a funny one. I feel like your joke's not really that funny. Only one team member will be hands-on. You and me. The other can advise and taste, <laughs> but they can't physically help. What? <laughs> that is not going to be easy. OK, teams, this time now, who will be cooking? Do you want to or do you want me to do it? No, I'll do it. It's his dish. It's what he cooked for me many years ago, and he's going to do it again. It's going to be really frustrating not being able to help you. 45 minutes was enough time if there was two of us in the kitchen. Now there's only one of us cooking. It's going to be very, very tight. I'll cook. Yeah. 
All right. I'm not going to change any of the elements of this dish. Um, I'm OK with it because every element of this dish takes a really minimal time to cook. I've just got to, like, be super, super fast. I'll, I'll do it. When it comes down to it, our hero is going to be the pasta sauce. And sauce is Paul's specialty, so I think it's uh, time to hand the cooking apron over to you, mate. All right. Yeah, suddenly that 45 minutes doesn't seem like enough. I've got the boyfriend. I cook these yeah. dishes all the time. I'm sorry, I know you don't have a husband or a boyfriend, but that's fine. I will be cooking. I think I'm the most experienced when it comes to cooking romantic meals. All right, I'll leave it up to you. I just need you to guide me. In this competition, we've had one body and two brains. I'm going to give you my whole, well, half the brain today. You'll have a, a one and a half brain. No, I need yeah, extra bread. Actually, I need mine. I'll keep mine. That's fine. Okay. Non-cooking contestants, please take a seat. Bye-bye. You got this. How are you doing, boy? You? you well? Yeah, I'm well. You well? Did you get uh, it? Nah. No, that's a bad joke. <laughs> Your time starts now. I need to get this miso broth going, babe. For our romantic meal, we're making poached ocean trout with sober miso broth and tempura oysters. Cut those roots off and throw them in, baby. We're cooking this dish today because it's seafood, and I think it's incredibly important to eat a light meal on a romantic evening to leave some room for a sexy dessert. Ah. Don't stress, don't stress. I'm not stressing. Just watch what you're doing. The first thing I need to do is make the miso stock. Miso is a traditional Japanese soup, and tonight we're going to serve it with our poached trout. <laughs> All right, that's on. OK, I'm going to do the peaches first, are we? For our romantic meal, we're going to be cooking roasted duck breast with peach two A's and potato and fennel puree. So, darling, the first time I cooked for you was Valentine's Day a few Our years ago. first one. And this wasn't because I was cheap, it was because I was trying to be romantic. <laughs> and, uh, and it worked. I didn't really like duck that much until you all actually cooked it for me. I think this duck to me is representation of you all's love for me. So it definitely brings back great memories. Peaches go with duck, because I mean plum sauce goes with duck, and so peaches are nice and sweet as well. There is a lot of sweetness in this dish, but hopefully it'll be compensated by the duck and also the fennel and potato puree. It is a romantic dish, so hopefully the sweetness won't be a bad thing. I need to roast them in the oven. Oh, man, this challenge is going to be fun. Come on. All right, do your potatoes? Yep. For our romantic meal, we're making beef filler with green peppercorn sauce. We're also serving it with potato croquettes, which are basically mashed up potato, which are then crumped and deep fried. Your boyfriend, he loves this dish, doesn't he? He sure does. He's a fan of the pepper sauce. I'm cooking this dish for my boyfriend. We've been together for five years, so this dish does mean a lot to me, and I want to make it perfect. All right, your potatoes are on. So we're going to cook a fillet mignon, which is a, just a small little bit of eye fillet steak. We're going to wrap it in some beautiful prosciutto. Vic, if a bloke got this, you know, for dinner, he'd definitely know he's going to have a good night. Yeah. All right, get on that sauce, mate. For our romantic meal, we're making fettuccine marinara with a tarragon cream sauce. We got those prawns, the yep. mussels. And, and scallops, if you've got time. Yeah. Yep. This is a romantic dish because it's about decadence. Cream, pasta and seafood. This is one of our wives' favourite dishes. Dice like you've never diced before, my friend. The first thing I need to do is to get that sauce on the go. It's the hero of our dish. Garlic and onion, I'm going to fry them off. After 10 years of marriage, you're going to have to add some spice. So we're going to put a little bit of chilli in this sauce. Oh, I'm just going to get some in there, mate. Yeah. And yep. I'm going to put some white wine in. Nice. So once that comes to the boil, I'm going to yep. chuck those mussels in. No worries. After the mussels, I reckon, get the pasta sauce. Yeah, well, mate. Now, this is some liquor. I'm putting into this bag. We're going to be cooking peach two ways, the roasted peaches, and sweet dessert wine infused with peaches. We're looking for the flavours of the wine to infuse with the peaches, so when you eat it, it's sweet, it has a taste of the peaches, but also a taste of the wine. So the potatoes, darling, this is for the potato and fennel puree. So we're going to sauté the potatoes and the fennel first, so keep them kind of small, darling, so they cook faster. Potato and fennel are a great combination, and fennel gives a little bit of bitterness to the dish, which will be good contrasting with all that sweetness. I've already got some uh, advantage here because I know this dish won you over. Yes. And you're not the easiest girl to charm, so... I don't really remember you telling any jokes that night, so it must have been your mm, charm. OK. Hey, Blair, how tough is it just sitting and watching? Very tough, mate. Technically, I've been asked to sit in the chair. Keep an eye on that sauce, too, for me. I feel helpless. I have to sit down for the whole 45 minutes and watch Helena cook by herself. Blair, you might want to, you know, I just want to get up and help her. You're going so well. Surely, if my bum's on the seat and I'm walking around with the chair, that's still OK, isn't it? It's hard sitting here, isn't it? Yeah. I wish I was up there cooking. Um, get onto the fish now, babe. Yep. I've got a huge piece of trout here that not only needs to be skinned, it also needs to be pin-boned and it needs to be portioned. I'm a woman. I know how to pluck things. Uh, you just have to pluck these little suckers out, don't you? Yeah. Bree and Jessica, they've got so much to do. Portioning up that tray out, making the broth, tempuring the oysters. I think they had their work cut out when there was two of them cooking, but now it's near impossible. Is there a lot there? There's a lot here, but that's all right, Jessie. 
Watching Brie debone the trout with a pair of tweezers, you know, it's very time consuming. I'm watching that clock, the time's just ticking away. I'll be more worried serving fish with bones in it. All right, babe, we need to hurry up. Pepper sauce. I'm a little worried today making the peppercorn sauce. It is Vicky's recipe and she's not making it. I have to do it. Saute them until they're nice and brown, all right? Yep. I like someone guiding me through my cooking. So a teaspoon of mustard in there and then put a splash of the Worcestershire sauce and a splash of the brandy. We want to get the boyfriend drunk, don't yeah. we? Yeah. I need you to open up the peppercorns. Just open all three. Looking over to Helena, she's just about to pop the peppercorns into the sauce. Not all. Oh, that's probably too much. Three jars. Pop your cream in, Len. Three jars of peppercorns. Can I taste? Damn, this sauce is hot. <coughs> it's pretty spicy. The judges are going to turn around and probably spit it out. It's that hot. Oh, that's really peppery. I'm a little bit nervous, Len. I'm a bit of a nervous wreck. I just want to get off that chair and help her, and I can't. Today, we're cooking a romantic dish in 45 minutes for the judges and the jury. Only one of us are allowed to cook. I really do hope Helena gets everything on this dish perfect, or we're going to be heading to showdown. Can I taste this uh, pepper sauce, please, Len? We're making beef fillet and green peppercorn sauce. Still really spicy? Yeah. I'm just a bit worried about that pepper sauce. That's right. You know what? I would chuck all that cream in there. The pressure's definitely on. We all know Manu loves a good sauce, and if I don't get this right, we're going to show down. I need to get that pasta going. Yep. Blair was going to be making our pasta, so I'm going to have to rely on him to give me some tips and advice. I haven't made it all that much, whereas Blair, well, I'd say you're an expert. Work okay, out together, give it a good knead. Bit of oil if, uh, on your fingers if you um, think it's a bit too uh, Good advice, mate, good advice. There's one thing I'm very accustomed to, is being told what to do in the kitchen. And if you're watching, darling, I do love you. Halve it and then rest it in some glad wrap, I reckon, and then get back to what you've got to do. Yeah. Unless Boys. you want to keep going. Get How you going, How are you going? So tell me what is your dish. We're going to do like a, a, marina a creamy sauce, a fettuccine marinara. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that's a we don't eat pasta anyway. a lot anymore, um, just because it's a lot of carbs and uh, the girls don't really like that at, in the evening. So if we were going to have a romantic dish, we'd have something that's forbidden, so to speak. So pasta. I just realised you just made the dough. Why didn't you start with the dough first? Because I want to reduce my sauce. I want to make sure I get the flavours in that right. Um, it, just saying you don't have time to roll the pasta. Well, so. we're in trouble. He mentions the pasta, and guess what? I am really concerned, and he's not helping me with those concerns. Time is over the essence, so yep. I'll leave you to it, and good luck. Nothing worse than just clock watching. What knives have we got here? We're making poached ocean trout with soba miso broth and tempura oysters. I need to get this skin off. The difficulty in taking this skin off is that you really want to do it in just a clean action. Brie, why don't you cut off the, ta the tail bit of the meat, the filling, and then the skin might come off a lot easier? It's, like, totally not ideal what's happened here. The number one challenge that I'm facing is the fact there are so many elements to this dish, and I want to treat them all with respect. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty under the pump right now. I'm not showing this fish any respect at all, and it's pretty gut-wrenching. This skin looks like a bit of a dog's it dinner does, right but now, doesn't Jessie. matter. Just get that skin on a, on a tray. We're going to use the crispy trout skin as a garnish, so I need to get it into a hot oven ASAP. Canelli, yep. next, if you can start caramelising the sugar as well as trimming the duck. We're cooking roasted duck breast with peach duets and potato and fennel puree. There are a few sweet elements to this dish, but we're also doing a citrus sauce. I'm going to actually juice stuff first. I know the duck is really important, but right now all my attention is on this sauce. And I'm the kind of guy that likes to do one thing and finish it before I go on to the next thing. How's that sugar going, Nelly? Um, it's not doing much at the moment. The cliche thing about guys is that we aren't able to multitask. But I'm really feeling that right now. I can't multitask. Check the features, check the features. Which is all right. Okay, you got to watch that caramel, though. Okay, so what else is there to do? You need to do the duck. Woo! All right. Okay, now keep your head together. You're doing really well. Ryan, the duck is the main star of this dish, so it'll take at least 12 minutes. So i got to get onto it really soon. 20 minutes, babe. Tempura batter, do the oysters. OK, Jesse, you just need to keep an eye on that clock for me, OK? Yeah. And remember, don't overwork that batter. I'm not going to overwork okay. the batter. And just show me it when you've got the consistency right. To check the skin in the oven, just to see how, if that's bubbling away nicely. Yes, it is. OK. Bree is definitely Wonder Woman at the moment. Just chop it up really finely. She's multitasking to the extremes. Now you need to get the water onto the asparagus. Yep. I'm a different woman today than what I was on the truck. This is how I wanted to be on the food truck. Assertive, giving advice. I'm being focused and just communicating effectively with Bree and making sure that she's on top of all the jobs. Look, Jesse, we want to redeem ourselves. Yeah, we do. So I reckon we need to get rolling on that pasta. I need to get onto that pasta. If I don't start rolling it, it's just not going to make the plate. With consistency, this pasta is pretty good, mate. Yep. The thinner you can get it for that first roll, probably the easier for you. Yeah. It's frustrating to sit on the sideline. I don't like it. I'm a person who likes to get their hands dirty, especially in this case with the pasta. I'm just looking at that pasta. 
I probably won't do it all. That's what I'm thinking, mate. If I'd rather make sure I got the seafood right. and the sauce as a hero. There's no way I'm going to get as much pasta done as we had probably hoped. So I'm going to have to adjust the amount. Are you happy with that amount of pasta, Blair? It may end up being more of an entree than a main meal. You will check the sugar, OK? Yep, oh, sugar, yep. For the citrus sauce, we need to caramelise sugar. How's that it's looking? Good. Yeah, just keep going. Just keep it on the heat. There's a lot of sugar in this pan, and it's taking a long time to actually turn to caramel. I see you all trying to do the sugar, and I'm calculating time, and it really needs to get onto the duck. Canal, you need to get that duck on right now. I need to stop doing the sugar, but at the same time, I want the sugar to work, and it needs to be watched. You all, we need to get onto it right now. We wouldn't feel great about facing you all now. They've been a sudden death. They've won. Not only do we know we're, they're strong cooks, no, keep going. but also we get along with them. You know, they're great people. It's just stressful knowing that there's so much to do. I need to get frying pans on for the steak. My steaks today are the hero of the dish. I'm going to do four at a time. So, Vic, I want this meat to be medium rare. Yeah. If it's not medium rare, it will be a disaster. I just want to add a little bit more technique to them, so I think a bit of prosciutto around the outside may look good. The prosciutto is not fitting around the actual outside, Vic. There's no way I'm going to worry about it. I'll fry it off. They need to get into the oven and then rest. You guys, got 15 minutes left. Put your heart and soul into it. I'm going to cook the fish now, babe. OK. To give our trout a beautiful Japanese flavour, tonight we're poaching it in sake, mirin and fish stock. We are cooking for our lives today. The trout's looking OK. They're not even portions. I reckon three, these ones three, three minutes. Three minutes, yep. I reckon these ones too. OK. It is going right. to make it a bit difficult to cook them because they aren't all the same size. In you go, little puppies. This trout being poached the right amount of time is going to make or break it. Bree, we need to get our skin out. I am. Bree needs to check that skin. It's been in the oven now. We don't want to over crisp it, as it were, we won't be able to use it as a garnish whatsoever. I need to cut this skin up. Triangles, like that. Like little wet, yeah, triangles, yeah. I'm under the pump. I'm under the pump massively. So at the moment, we just got to add the cream to the sauce, cook the prawns and the scallops, which are really quick. So really, I want to make sure I get this sauce reduced. I mean, it'll still taste nice, but I want it to be reasonably yeah. thick. Cooking my seafood is about 100% concentration. I need to focus and get this seafood right. If I stuff them up, the whole dish is gone. Tell you what, mate, this is a mad scramble at this stage. You're doing a great job, mate. Yeah, I think You get that duck on pretty much. All right, I'll get on right now. With this duck, you need to make sure that the skin is rendered and is nice and golden brown. Darling, we want that duck to be medium rare, OK? Yep. Once the skin is brown, I brush on some honey and then I chuck in the oven for a few more minutes. How's this look? I can't see it. How's this look? Yeah, that's fine. Just, just add the citrus and whisk. For our citrus sauce, the sugar finely caramelizes so I can add the juice to the sauce and start to reduce it. Uh, I just need to continue to whisk it and dissolve it as we go. No time to slow down, OK, Nelly? Yep. OK, they got to sit for 10 minutes. Yep. All right, Len, what are you up to? The potato croquettes? Yeah. We have lots of seasoning. They look great. My plan for the croquettes are to pop them into an egg wash, flour and breadcrumbs, and then into the deep fry. They need to be crunchy on the outside and fluffy and soft in the middle. I want to try it once it's been deep fried. Something's not right. What's happening, Len? They're just coming off. They're coming apart. I don't get it. There's potato all throughout the deep fryer. What am I doing wrong? You've just got to wrap them in bread, more breadcrumbs. Len, how are they looking? Not good. It finally hits me. I have forgotten to put the egg wash and flour around my croquettes. I don't know what else to do. Like, Alina. These croquettes need the egg wash and the flour to hold them together. How do they look? What's so No, bad? they've just, they're, they're gone. They're okay. not nothing. So far, all I have is steak. The pepper sauce is really hot and these disaster croquettes. If I stuff up this meal, Vicky and I could be going for showdown. Okay. My head's gone. I don't know what I'm doing. Step away from that. Lenny, Helena, listen to me. What? You don't need it. The potato croquettes, they're falling apart and they're shocking. Don't worry about putting them on the plate. The croquettes are not going to make the plate. And I told Helena, let them go, forget about them. Helena, what? It's all good. Leave it, Lynn. Oh, you don't need it. I feel really bad because Helena's getting quite emotional. You know, she feels like it's going to be her fault if we go to showdown. Sorry, I'm just angry that this didn't work out. It's fine. It's a team's effort. I've guided her through this. So whatever happens today, you know, it's both of us. Fish is coming out now, Jessie. Fish okay. is coming out. Cool. Good girl, Bree. You're doing so good. All right, I need to do these oysters now. Yep, we need to do the oysters. Just quickly dip them in, throw them in, dip them in, throw them in. You need to hurry up, Bree. All right, get that asparagus on while you're doing that. Get the asparagus on. And we've got to do the noodles as well. We were running out of time. We're not going to get this plated up. I think this thing's pretty good, darling. To finish this potato with fennel puree, I need to blend it up. Darling, I think the puree is quite nice. I don't think it's too runny. Can I take the duck out? No, we're not going to know if this is cooked perfectly until we chop it open. We want this duck to be nice and pink inside, not too overcooked, but not rare either. How does it look, you well? It does look a bit raw. I really hope this is enough to keep us out of the cook-off. Just keep cutting, you've got three minutes. 
Three? Yeah. What the heck? I'm not even joking. Just start with a little and then you can build on that. Let's go, mate, a little bit quicker. <laughs> babe, we've got to start plating out. I oh, know, I am, babe. Let's do something like that. I always trust you with presentation. Looking sexy? Yeah, it's heaps sexy. Probably just two of those each, then. Definitely need more pasta, mate. Oh, something's going over here. The soba noodle. OK. Bree, I feel like my heart's pumping out of my chest at the moment. I think I'm going to just put two slices. Yeah, I agree. So you've got one minute remaining, fast as you can. Quickly, Bree. Beautiful. The dish looks gorgeous. OK, pictures. Come on, Nelly. Get that fish on. I'm doing it, Jesse. I'm doing it. Oh, my God. Let's go, mate. Come on. I'm right behind you here. Just got 30 seconds. This is it. Oh, God. I need to put the oysters on. Oysters, babe. Just sit them on there. Doing well, you are 20 seconds. Quickly, quickly. Ten, oh, my nine, God. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it, guys. Time's up. Step away from your benches. <laughs> Give me a hug. <laughs> well done, buddy. That looks spectacular. I'd be happy if you served this to me. I'm glad. Yeah. It's a boring steak with some sauce. Are you serious? I'm so not happy with what is on that plate right now. I'm just so gutted that I didn't get those last two pieces of skin on Jess. Well done, teams. The jury will taste your meals and save one team from competing in the showdown. Pete and I will also save one team. Teams, you can wait at the back. Good job, boys. Heading to the back of the house, I'm actually really happy. I think you all did an incredible job, and this dish has won me over already. So hopefully it'll do the same for the judges and the jury. Our role today as the jury is to pick our favourite dish. It's a pretty big responsibility. We need to make sure we make the right decision. Jury, welcome to the blind tasting table, where you will taste and judge your opponent's meals. Today, we asked the teams to cook a romantic dish. For this challenge, only one team member was allowed to cook. The whole time? Mm -hmm. 45 minutes. Oh, my gosh. That's so tough. Well, I'm probably expecting to see some half-finished dishes today. Gee, I'm glad we won. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's try the first dish, beef fillet with green peppercorn sauce. Thank you. Thank you. Just not the best I've done, so I'm a bit disappointed in myself. Thank you. Very peppery. <laughs> It's a beautiful piece of meat. Seasoned well, cooked well. Yeah. Really tender. The beef is cooked to perfection. I think whoever was cooking me this on a date, they would have won me over. <laughs> I would have strained the peppercorns out, though. Lots of peppercorns. Lots of peppercorns. Mm. It's just, once you have a couple of those, your it's, whole mouth is Your mouth is still yeah, like, now. Down. My face like, <laughs> exploding. I like it really Yeah, same. Yeah. And because it is like a romantic, seductive challenge, so like, you know, get the juice get as the well. Heat <laughs> Let's try dish number two, fettuccine marinara with tarragon cream sauce. Oh, pasta. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. This is romantic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's this would be me order. I'm feeling very happy with what we plated, considering the time constraint. Mm. Well done. Can't believe one person made pasta by themselves. Yeah, that's I know. Great. Absolute legend. I really enjoyed it. I think it's very impressive for one person to do all that in 45 minutes. And the seafood's cooked perfectly as yeah, well. Yeah. It screams indulgence. Um, I think seafood, pasta, a creamy sauce. That's the type of dish that I would like on a date. Yeah. Well, let's try dish number three. Roasted duck breast with peach two ways and potato and fennel puree. Thank you. I like, I like the puree. I really love that puree. It's the first thing I try and I love it. Mm. Yeah, I like the chicken puree. Yeah, I like it. Absolutely adore the flavours of the duck. I really like the citrusy sauce and I love the peaches. I think it was just a bit too sweet, like with the peaches and then the sauce. Oh, and... really? I think it sounds very romantic and the idea of it's very romantic and duck with fruit is a good idea. Mm. Yeah, mm. I think that too. I'm really proud of you. You did a really good job. Thanks, Sally. So here we've got poached trout with soba miso broth and tempura oysters. I'm not confident at all about that dish. I think we did bad, yeah, terribly. Bit of inconsistencies. Yeah. I see that everybody else has got crispy skin. We're missing our skin on ours. I think these people have run out of time. 
and there is a lot going on in this bowl. Yeah, we're missing yeah. our crispy skin as well. They've got two aphrodisiacs in here, at least. Yeah, oysters. And asparagus. Awesome. Someone's thought about Get setting the mood. mood. Getting lucky. <laughs> Ugh. Unfortunately, um, our piece of trout is a little undercooked. It's not undercooked, it's just not, not cooked well. I, I don't enjoy it. I, I love ocean trout, it's like one of my favourite things, and I'm like, I'm so devastated, because it's, it's a wasted. The flavour in it's not really intense enough, like it's... A bit like last time. Yeah. The broth itself has absolutely no flavour, no seasoning. It's like a diluted stock. It's a really, really, really bad dish. Definitely, I think, my least favourite of the four dishes. Jury, the future of these teams is riding on you. So consider your verdict carefully. Thank you. Thank you. So... I think the seafood. I think the pasta for me. If I was going to order one of those dishes, beef, man, beef. But I don't like seafood that much, so I'm probably the biased. pasta, yum. It's romantic. It's not, though. Lady in the Tramp. It's trailer. messy. <laughs> Two dogs. <laughs> Two dogs. I think of Lady in the Tramp, where the dogs eat the pasta together. I think it's definitely romantic. <laughs> <laughs> If I had a, like, steak, like, I'd never go out on a date and be like, yeah, I'll have a steak. Yeah, especially on a first date. There was a lot of toing and froing, as you get with the group of indecisive females. I like the duck. Oh, I like the duck a lot. It's going to be a tough decision choosing which team to save from the showdown. Hope we make the right one. Today we had to cook a romantic meal for the judges and the jury. The twist was that only one of us was allowed to cook. Two teams will be safe, two teams will be going to the showdown. Teams, today we asked you to cook your ultimate romantic meal. It's time to hear what we thought of your meals. You well and Chanel. Roasted duck breast with peach two ways and potato and fennel puree. I really like the concept of your dish. The duck, fennel and the peaches. It was bordering on fine dining. I've got to say that puree was one of the best we've had in the competition so far. Full of flavour, perfectly smooth, and the right consistency. I loved it. But the duck was on the rare side. I'm sure with another 15 minutes, you would have hit the heights that you aimed for. I think that you did need more time to finalise this dish, but I was impressed that everything made the plate. <laughs> Peaches and duck is a great combination, uh, very classic. And the orange sauce and duck is another classic. But it was far too sweet. Yeah, fruit is great with savory, but you need to know how to make it work. We're definitely borderline right now, but we just got to hear what the judges thought about the other dishes. Paul and Blair. Fettuccine marinara with tarragon cream sauce. I love seafood. If I was to cook a romantic dinner for my partner, I definitely would do seafood as well. And I'd put in as much attention to detail with cooking that seafood as you guys did. Each and every piece of seafood on our plates was perfect. <laughs> well done. The pasta, maybe a little bit too thick and a lot of elasticity in, into it. The, this is a very small criticism because your dish as a complete dish was to die for. Ooh la la, sexy. That's the hardest thing I've done in this competition so far. It feels like all the effort paid off. Bree and Jessica. Poached ocean trout with soba miso broth and tempura oysters. How was your time in the kitchen today? Very, very crazy. Rush. You had a lot to do. Mm. And I have to say, I'm not sure why you attempted all of those elements. Because I think that let down your dish. Your noodles, it's hard to make soba noodles taste good unless you've got a flavour some broth. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, your broth lacked flavour. Your fish, a little under seasoned, mm -hmm. but well cooked. For me, ladies, the crispy skin wasn't crispy and it shouldn't have made the plate. So many mistakes were made. It's pretty devastating, actually. Helena and Vicky. Beef fillet with green peppercorn sauce. We definitely want to avoid going to showdown today. Every time we've come to this point, we go to showdown. Beef as a romantic meal. Sure, if you're cooking for a couple of blokes. It is a great idea. But is it how you would normally serve it? Not normally, no. Uh, we were meant to do a potato croquette, and that didn't make the plate, so... Well, the elements that did make the plate, I thought were beautiful. I thought your steak was beautiful and rare, well caramelised on each side. And that peppercorn sauce, it packed a punch. I would have loved more of it. Oh, okay. I think your beef was cooked to perfection. The sauce I loved, 
I think the problem with your dish is it was incomplete. I'm definitely not confident that the steak and sauce is enough. I don't think I've done enough. Teams, your meals were judged in a blind tasting. And after careful deliberation, the jury have made their decision. Jury, which dish was your favourite? The jury's chosen the pasta. Thank you. Oh, that is such a relief. <laughs> there is no way we wanted to cook again today. Feeling pretty happy with ourselves. Thanks, guys. Oh, thanks. Yeah, well done. That was thanks, good. Guys. That was good. Now it's our turn to save one team from the showdown. And that team is... Helena and Vicky. Wow, I feel shocked. Yes. It wasn't enough on the paper, but what was there was excellent. We are twinning. <laughs> I feel like we're on a losing streak at the moment, definitely. Maybe the mums aren't as good as what we all think they are. And if we can get rid of them now, that's pretty good for us. You, Ellen Chanel, Brie and Jessica, you will now enter the showdown. The good news? You're back together as teams. <laughs> <laughs> and the bad news? The weakest team from this cook-off will have to take on Josh and Danielle in sudden death. We are not in a frame of mind to be able to tackle Josh and Danielle at the moment, so going into sudden death would be our ultimate death, I think. Teams, sometimes in love, you don't get a second chance. But today, you do. You get a second chance to make us fall in love with your cooking using the most decadent and luxurious ingredient of them all. Chocolate. I love to eat chocolate. I'm not a big fan with cooking with it. One of the worst possibilities and outcomes that we could have expected. We could be in trouble today. Desserts have been our Achilles heel so far in this competition. This is our last chance to stay out of sudden death and we've just got to fight through. And we have to do it right now. We have one hour for the showdown. Your time. Starts now. Come on, you are the <laughs> so, what do we do? We need to think decadent, we need to think chocolate, we need to think romantic. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is a chocolate molten cake. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. It's so decadent, like, yeah. it's, it's oozy, yeah. it's just, it's so. It's like an eruption of love. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if I got everything. One of our favourite chocolate bars has chocolate, peanuts, and caramel, and today we're going to make a deconstructed version of that. We're going to break a Snickers bar down to its elements. A chocolate mousse, salted caramel peanuts, almond biscuit crumble, and some chocolate shards. Then we're going to plate it separately for a modern twist. I can just chuck it all in together, right? Pardon? I can just chuck it all in together? Yeah. It is a dessert challenge, so I'm very glad that Chanel's back in the kitchen and that she's going to be able to give me direction as to what to do because I'm quite clueless right now. No, we've just got to fight on because I'm not going to sudden death again. Are you guys surprised who's actually facing off? Yeah, I can't believe Brian just finished this position. I bet they're shocked that they're there. I think Brie and Jess are definitely a threat in this competition. We want to see Brie and Jess in, in sudden death. death. For our showdown dish today, we're making a dark chocolate molten cake with hazelnut biscuit crumb and espresso syrup. This is your dessert, Jess. It is. So you're going to tell me what you need me to do. There's a lot of responsibility that sits on my shoulders today. I've got to make sure these molten cakes are cooked to perfection. The first thing we need to get onto is making the molten cake batter. A molten cake is all about a soft centre. If the sauce doesn't ooze out of it, it's just a regular chocolate cake. Undercooking it will be terrible because it will just fall apart on the plate. It's a very yeah. tricky little thing to master, it is. isn't it? We just have to be focused and stick to the tasks that we've set before us. We've just served up a horrendous meal for the rapid cook-off. We don't want to serve up another failure. OK, mix is done. The batter's done, but we're not going to cook the cakes yet. We'll do it at the end so that the cakes are still warm when we serve them. OK, so down here I've got cream and milk, which I'm spring to the heat to add to those egg yolks. I've got to get onto the chocolate mousse as soon as possible. We need to make sure that mixture is cooked, cooled and set before service. It's really nerve-wracking not to know how this chocolate's going to turn out until just before we serve it. No, I'm really worried. I just I don't know if I'm going to get this right or not. You'll be fine, OK? Aww. I don't want to go sudden death, you know? Guys. Love is in the air, guys. It's been romantic all day. Hey, Jesse, do you reckon this is a good consistency? To make the biscuit crumb, I rub together flour and butter. Just done. Yep, just clump, so kind of clump together. Yeah, so we, a bit. we are going to do our damnedest to win. Yeah. 
We are yeah. not going down without a fight. We've got so much invested in this competition now that we, we don't want to go home. No. We do not want to go to sudden death. This dish will be the dish that makes us or breaks us, so everything on it needs to be perfect, everything. Next. Jess? Yeah. Calm down. Will it be a molten meltdown for Brie and Jessica? Okay. For the showdown tonight, we're going to do a deconstructed Snickers bar and we're going to make sure this is perfect. Otherwise, we're going to sudden death. Both of these teams are working their hardest right now to create their best chocolate dessert. Thanks, so how do you feel about going up against Green Jessica? Look, they're a really strong team, but at the same time, they seem to be maybe a little bit weak recently. I don't know. I think the pressure's kind of gotten to them. Look, we're worried about cooking against you, Elle Chanel. It's a husband and wife team. It's a totally different dynamic than two friends. But they've struggled with their desserts as much as we have in the past. You know, I need to watch this quite carefully because it is... Um... That's the main component, darling. You worry about that, let me worry about the rest right now. Yep. Yep. So basically, I'm making the chocolate mousse for our deconstructed Snickers bar, and you all's going to start on the almond crumble. So, darling, once this is ready, I need to put it in the oven. Yep, for about half an hour, so we need to get that in really quickly, or until it's golden, really. OK. The almond crumble gives this whole dish quite a nice nutty texture and flavour. No idea how to do this. I'm whipping the cream so we can add it to the chocolate mousse mixture. The fact that I don't know this recipe so well is definitely going to affect our dessert. I kind of am leaving it all to Chanel. Let's make it quite light and fluffy. Definitely feeling a lot of pressure in this challenge right now. We're both kind of relying on me in this moment. I really hope that I can pull us both through. Can I good? Can you pass that to me now? I'm going to turn it off. Just... Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, thanks, okay. Alex. It's good. Right. We're going to put this right into the freezer and make sure it's as cold as we can. Do you think the mousse is going to take time? It's a bit risky. I don't think it's enough time to make a mousse and have it set. No. Unset mousse doesn't look too pretty. It just looks like chocolate cream. Yeah. OK, what next, Ali? Jess, I'm just going to put the toffee on now. OK. How much water and how much sugar do you want me to do, Jessie? No, don't put water, just do it uh, right. dry. The problem with doing a dry toffee is that it can very easily burn. Pretty much every element on this plate has the capacity to go wrong. How's that biscuit crumb going? Oh, it's all right. It's all right, it's all right. Is it done? Yeah. I'm just, just worried. It. Is that... It's cooked. It's cooked. It's a little floury. I'm asking Jess about the crumble because I am starting to dissect every element on this plate. What do you That's think? Sugar to it. When you butts on the line, you need to dissect everything. I don't know, do you reckon it's cooked? Yeah, it's cooked, it's still going to cook on the tray. I think Bree's overthinking things. All right. It's perfect to me. Bree definitely needs to trust me at this stage. I reckon we should put this back in just for another couple no, of minutes. We, no, Are you no. seriously happy with that? Yes, I am. Mm. We're not the only ones who argue, Chesney. <laughs> I reckon it's got enough. You can see there's tension. If you can't work together well, it doesn't matter how well you can cook, it's not going to happen for you on the plate. I think it's perfect. I've got a, a sneaky sort of... suspicion that we're back on the truck and one or two of the wheels are starting to wobble. Okay, I'm going to work on the chocolate. As well as the chocolate mousse, we're going to make chocolate shards to decorate the dish. Are you doing dry caramel over there? So I heat the sugar up, and then I add the cream, and then I add the nuts. Salt. And then I add nuts. Yep. yep. You can't have a Snickers bar without caramel and the nuts, so we're going to make a salted caramel yeah. sauce with some roasted peanuts. Once the sugar has caramelised, we add cream, stir it all around, and chuck in the peanuts. Once the peanuts are coated with the caramel, we add salt. We want it to be quite salty, but still sweet at the same time. Yeah, that's good. Is enough? Yeah. Is enough? I'm not too sure how much salt I need to add to the salted caramel. Need more salt, you are. Need more salt? Go for it. Be my guest. Be careful, please. <laughs> you all put quite a lot of salt in this caramel. Chanel's tasted it, and now she's putting a whole lot more salt in there. How's that caramel going? Do you reckon that toffee's all right? It's all right. Oh, my gosh, you can tell that desserts aren't this strong for you. I'm trusting Jess with this dessert, but I can see that she's struggling right now. The things that we have time to rectify, we need to rectify them because everything needs to be perfect. Do you reckon that that's... That's going to have to do. I, I reckon make another batch. It looks a little bit too brown for me, don't you? The praline has had to be redone. They're starting to lose a little bit of confidence. Looking good. Once the almond crumble is cooked, we take it out of the oven and put it into the fridge to cool. Our biggest worry today is that things won't cool in time. Mm -hmm. They really want that crumble to be cool when it goes on the plate because it goes on with the mousse. And if anything's warm on the plate, the mousse will just go to a runny mess. Hey, I'm gonna from here. Hey, I'm gonna huh? I'm gonna I'm gonna I can't understand you. 
you know, we're pretty much just waiting for stuff to cool down. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how we're going to do that. It's time to put our cakes in. Molten cakes need to be cooked for a very precise time so that they keep their shape on the outside but have a soft, gooey centre. It should take 11 and a half minutes. That's what we do at home. All right, have you got this on? Why are they stirring the sugar in the pan? You've got to shake it and then it's it. That's and it. then you actually, like, take it off the heat. Praline is one thing I do actually know on desserts. Bree and Jessica obviously never cooked praline before. They're stirring the sugar syrup, which is, you know, the first thing you don't do. Is that, that overdone? Yeah. It's all right. I'll do another one, Jess. Jessie, don't worry. I'm just not feeling enthusiastic about this today. I just I just can't seem to get out of this stupid rut that I'm in. Jess? Yeah. Calm down. It's important that Jess pulls herself together. Okay. There's two of us in this team, and I can't fight for both of us. There is still time on the clock. I make another toffee. Oh, it's all time. I don't really... Yeah, maybe... Don't... Not yet, not yet, not yet. Leave it in there, leave it in there. No. <laughs> I don't know what to do right now, because I've got to wait. It's so stressful because we know this is the challenge that could be sending us to sudden death. But right now, we're waiting for things to chill. It'd be so frustrating. You'd be just like oh. wanting to do something. Like she keeps opening the fridge, and they've just got to keep that shut if things are going to cool. Oh, no. Chanel keeps opening the fridge, and I just want to say, keep it shut. All right, Jesse, I reckon this toffee's done. OK, we'll tip it out, because it needs to set. We've only got four minutes to go. That's better. That's better, Jess. Right. OK, cool. Finally, the toffee is working. Third time lucky. We're making coffee syrup to go with these cakes. Coffee and chocolate, it's the perfect combo. And the main thing we've got to do right now, darling, is plate up. The chocolate mousse comes out of the freezer and we just got to try it on the plate because we don't have any more time for it to set. I try to do the first cornell, I put it on the plate and it stays for about two seconds and then it becomes a big blob. It's not really holding together. It's extremely disappointing to see that the mousse hasn't set and that it's not going to work. That mousse is looking a bit... We'll just have to think on our feet for a different presentation idea. Cut a plate up. To plate up this dessert, we want to do it in a deconstructed kind of way. A bed of crumble with some salted caramel peanuts in between and some shards of dark chocolate. The presentation's really important on this dessert, darling. It doesn't, doesn't look too bad, I guess. If you don't think it looks perfect, I want it to be perfect, you know what I mean? So I don't know if you should just take it out right now. Maybe when everything else is on the plate, it'll look better, because right now it just looks weird. I'm pretty disappointed at this point. I know the mousse isn't technically a mousse. We decide that we're just going to spread the mousse on the plate with a brush and hopefully be able to reconstruct this dessert in a different kind of way. Oh, the smear the chocolate mousse. You don't really smear mousse. No, you don't smear mousse. I'm taking them out now, Brie. I'm a bit nervous about the molten cakes, if they're going to be cooked. This element is the star of the show, so it's not perfect. It's going to probably send us to sudden death. Surely they're cooked by now, seriously. Yep, they're feeling like they're firm. Yeah, we're not going to know if they're right until they come out of those ramekins. To plate up, I brush a little bit of the coffee syrup onto a plate, do a little pile of the biscuit crumb, quenelle of the mascarpone on top of the biscuit crumb, and then turn out the molten cake. Oh, please don't be overcooked. This is my recipe, my chance at redemption, my chance to prove myself in this competition. I need these cakes to work for me. <laughs> I just want these to come out really easy. Do you think they will? I hope so. OK, here we go. I hope so. Ooh. Has it worked? It hasn't cooked as much as what we wanted. Time is running out. Oh, my God. I'm thinking... <sighs> Straight away, I'm thinking, where's sudden death? Here we come. Has it worked? It hasn't cooked as much as what we wanted. It's definitely molten, but not to the extent they want it. They're not cooked. I'm so disappointed. I can't even get a molten cake right. All right, we're getting these back in. I think it's over. The cake looks like a cow pat. It's not <laughs> a chocolate cow pat. How long? A minute can make all the difference, and a, a minute further will ruin it. Cool. We've all right, got, all right, all right. We've got, we've got enough. Yes, we do. Hang on. We have to be really smart about how long we put them back in the oven for. Jesse, how long? They'll only need a couple of minutes. So how long do you want them to go Just in for? Just a minute. One minute? You sure? I don't know. Are you sure? <laughs> Bree and Jessica have definitely been one of our biggest threats through the competition so far. But given they're in this rattled state, maybe now is a good time to go up against them and beat them. Take them out. Take them out. Everything is riding on these cakes right now. This is the moment of truth for us. <sighs>
Please, please, please work. Oh, it's... No, that worked. That worked. I'm feeling like I'm a complete failure at this point. The dish is a disaster. Total disaster. All right, we've still got one minute. No, no, Just get him back in there. Right, we've, only got, we've only got one minute. We haven't got time. It's done. We know we're going to sudden death. Guys, you've got one minute to go. I don't really know how to do these shards. OK, don't worry. Looking down at our dessert, I think it looks restaurant quality. I know technically the mousse is not correct, but at the same time, it does taste incredible. Oh, my God, Jessie. It's a disaster. Oh my god, what can we do? Just play it up another one to see maybe one of these we're will work better. Plates. Maybe one of these will work better. Stop stressing out, it's done now. We can't, like, we've got 40, we've got to play it up, Brie. Cut that toffee. Guys, got 30 seconds left, that's all. It is what it is. We're going. We're going. It's done. 10, 9, 8, eight 7, seven six, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Time is up. Oh, well, we did our best. Yeah. Did it oh, hard day, yeah. I can see Jessica, and she's looking like she's in a world of hurt. It's a disgrace. This is not me on a plate. Tell me how are you? They have messed up massively. Brie and Jessica, if you could please bring up your dish. I'm so embarrassed. The flavours are good. We know the flavours. It's really just good. that the star of the show is a failure. No, it's no good. It's so bad. We're going to sudden death. There's just no two ways about it. Brie and Jessica, are you happy with what you've served? We're quite embarrassed and sad about it. Yeah. I'm feeling really disappointed. Because <laughs> I'm a good dessert person and I didn't show the other plate today. <laughs> all right, babe. It's all right. This means a lot to me and I don't like to fail. I'm sacrificing a lot to be here. I'm quality time with my beautiful little babies, with my husband. Everybody is allowed to make mistakes. <sighs> as long as you tell yourself that tomorrow you can change that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. There's no way that Yuella Chanel could have had a failure more epic than this. Presenting our dish to Peter Manu is very nerve-wracking, and it puts a lot of doubt in you as well as to if your dish is any good. Thank you. There you are. Thank you. When we played it up, we thought we did a really good job, but now seeing the judges eat our dessert, we are completely doubting ourselves. So you were happy with the consistency of the mousse? Yeah. Did you try the salty caramel? We tried it for the first time, and we didn't think it was salty enough, so we added a little bit more. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. I'm really feeling like others that really didn't hit the mark today. We didn't think we'd be so close to sudden death again. Now we're just one step closer. Walking back in the kitchen HQ, so close to sudden death, all I'm thinking is I really don't want to go back there. I really hope this chocolate dish is just enough to get us over that line. I'm totally devastated that we haven't been able to prove ourselves as good dessert makers. We've reached an epic low today. Teams, chocolate is the most romantic of all ingredients. And this was your chance to be decadent with your cooking. But right now, your fate depends on whether your dish impressed us. As you know, the team that didn't impress will be fighting it out against Josh and Danielle in the next sudden death. It doesn't matter who we're cooking off against. We came here to win, so we're going to win. Brian Jessica, dark chocolate molten cake with hazelnut biscuit crumb and coffee syrup. What I love about a molten cake is cracking that spoon on the outside of that cake, breaking it, and having that chocolate rushing out like lava. You took that away from me. 
But even though the cooked a molten cake still tastes good because of the type of recipe that it is. But is the flavor of the cake good enough to save you? I got the molten, but not the cake. But luckily, all the flavors were there. I did like your coffee syrup. I liked your hazelnut crumbs. There was a lot of effort in there. But unfortunately, you know where you went wrong in your dessert today, and so do we. The judges are disappointed in us. We're disappointed in ourselves. You Ellen Chanel, milk, chocolate mousse, with salted caramel peanuts, and almond crumb. Your chocolate mousse, beautiful flavor. Nice and silky. A warm consistency. A mousse is a dessert that's fluffy and light and aerated. You didn't whisk your cream enough. It was never gonna set. Your almond crumbs, your dark chocolate twirls was fantastic. Your salted caramel and peanuts, you were too heavy on the salt, it was unbalanced. We've said before in this competition over and over that what we don't like is too sweet desserts, but you went the other way. It was too salty. After I tasted it, I needed a glass of water. This whole day, it seems like we've just been missing the mark. This was a very difficult decision because neither team performed very well. But we know that both teams are capable of so much more. The weakest team from this showdown will go into the sudden death cook-off against Josh and Danielle and face elimination. And that team is... Yoel and Chanel. Knowing that we're going to sudden death again really, really sucks. I still remember the first time we heard those words and it hasn't gotten any better. Guys, it was a very tough call. Each dessert had some big faults, but the one that stood out the most was that salt content. And like that much. We're gonna fight. I don't really wanna be in this competition. So we're just gonna work well together and continue on. Mm -hmm. Right now I don't feel great, but I know that once we compose ourselves, we're gonna come back, we're gonna be stronger. You are Chanel are best friends, and I can't go home yet. Josh and Danielle, you are and Chanel. Sudden death is your last chance. We're ready and prepared for sudden death cook-off. All we can do is bring our A game on the day. Josh and Danielle, we've survived sudden death before. We're going to survive again. It's the elimination that will truly touch you. It just brings a tear to your eye, doesn't it? But is it our team from Geelong that gets this reaction? Oh, my goodness. The sudden death elimination that will have you on the edge of your seat. Quick, quick, quick! Sorry, yourself. Shut up. Uh-oh. Wow. For me, it's a 10 out of 10. But it's this that will have everyone talking. When something so simple is executed so well, it was more than perfect. My Kitchen Rules, tomorrow, 7.30.